Alaska is one of those states that seems to just have some of the scariest things going on. Maybe it has something to do with it being vastly unexplored. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. And welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true horror stories from the great state of Alaska, sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. Now, without further ado, let us go explore this creepy and desolate state of Alaska. My name is James. I was born and raised in a small town in Alaska. I spent most of my childhood carefree, roaming and exploring the forest. My dad would take me hunting or my friends, and I would go hiking in the mountains. When I was 18, I joined the Marine Corps. I was in the infantry and spent four years in California or deployed. After my four years, I returned home to Alaska, excited to go back to my forest and mountains but I didn't realize how much I had changed. I still loved being out in the middle of nowhere, but after the experiences I had in the military, I had become far more in tune with the feeling that lingers in the air when something is terribly wrong. I had decided to go explore a mountain a little way out. It was past town, not too far, but not too close. I had the week off. It was a beautiful day, the sun was shining, and the sky was amazingly blue. There was a perfect breeze blowing and I was loving my life. My plan was to try and make it up as far up the mountain as possible before dark, camp out, and then finish the hike the next day. It was a rough going. The brush was thick and the mountain was thick. I was trying to be as loud as possible to try and avoid sneaking up on a large bear. As a rule, I never venture alone into the wilderness without at the very least a handgun. Though often I bring a shotgun as well. Bears have been known to take multiple shots and still have enough adrenaline coursing through their veins to reach the hunter and do some damage. At around 3 p.m., I came across a small clearing and I decided to sit at the shade of a tree. I wanted to eat my lunch and enjoy the scenery. I found a comfy spot and settled down. I was enjoying the view and trying to gauge how much further I could make it before I needed to settle down for the night. While lost in my thoughts, I could hear branches breaking on the upper side of the clearing. This snapped me out of my thoughts, and I began to listen more carefully. The branches and leaves were being broken and moved, and it sounded like the animal was clearly big. I was excited at the thought of getting to see a moose. Moose hunting season was only a couple of weeks away, and spotting a large bull beforehand would give me a leg up on the hunt. I waited, holding my breath trying not to make any noise at all. After a couple of minutes, I saw the telltale sign of a bull moose. I could see large white flashes between the branches. I couldn't believe my eyes. His antlers were so darn high up that I was convinced that this was a record-breaking moose. Eventually, it wandered off, down the mountain, away from me. I couldn't believe my luck. Here I was out for a hike and I ended up finding a trophy bull. I packed up my lunch and decided to head over to where I had seen the moose and try and find antler rubs and tracks. I was completely shocked at how high up the tree rubs were. It easily had to be 14 feet up. I looked around for tracks but I only managed to find two. The imprints were deep in the ground, making me think that it had to have weighed a ton. Smiling to myself, I continued to my hike. In Alaska, during the summer, the sun doesn't exactly set, so there's always a little bit of light even during the middle of the night. I decided to call it quits at around 8pm. I started to enter the area where the trees were thinning out and the clearings were more frequent. I got a fire going and I laid out my ranger roll to sleep in. A ranger roll is just a sleeping bag wrapped in a tarp. It's comfy and warm and I drifted off to sleep. At some point in the night, I'm not entirely sure what time. I woke up feeling the call of nature. Groggily, I got up and threw a couple more logs on the fire, 
and wander off to a tree line about 25 meters away from my camp. While relieving myself, I caught a whiff of something that I could only describe as foul. My tired brain was racing, trying to figure out what it was, when I finally settled on the bear. Bears often smell like a skunk mixed with rotten meat. Slowly, I turned to scan the area looking for a grizzly. Directly opposite to me, I saw flashes of white up in the trees. I froze. Moose kill more people in Alaska than bears do annually. So justifiably, I was nervous. I sat there for a few minutes until the moose stepped out of the trees and came into the light of my fire. My jaw dropped. Never in my worst dreams had I seen anything as horrific as what stood before me. This moose, whatever it was, walked out on two legs. It was extremely tall, with the legs of a moose that connected to a rotting human torso, arms that almost scraped the ground. Its hands had long, thin fingers with rotten, black, claw-like fingernails. Its head is what scared me the most. It was the rotten skull of a moose with giant antlers. Its lower jaw hung limply with tendrils of steam escaping the gaping chasm. The eye sockets were pitch black with glowing red orbs floating in the expanse. During my time in the Marines, we were forced to carry our rifles everywhere we went. If it was further than an arm's distance away from you, you'd get your ass kicked. This had followed me even after getting out. Propped up against the tree next to me was my 12-gauge shotgun. The creature started letting out a quiet chittering sound, swaying slightly, slowly bending down into an aggressive stance. Slowly, it began to reach for my gun. In my experience, if it breathes, it can die. The creature noticed my movement and let out an ear-splitting screech that I have never heard in my life. The closest I can describe it is that it sounded like a man, woman, and animal, all screaming at the same time. It began charging me. I quickly grabbed my shotgun and sent a slug into the creature's chest as I jumped and dodged out of the way. It screamed again, grabbing its chest and rolling on the ground. I picked myself up quickly and pumped slug after slug into the thing. It continued screaming rolling around in agony. I fired until I heard my gun go click. I quickly bolted down the mountain after this, running for all I was worth. Behind me, the creature continued to scream. After a while, I slowly tried to get my bearings. I knew that I was only a few miles up the mountain and that if I kept going, I'd be able to reach my truck and get out of there. I continued making my way down the mountain when I got thrown several yards into a tree. Gasping and dazed, I looked and saw the creature standing there, panting and bleeding. My head was spinning, and my chest was on fire. I had snapped several ribs when I collided with the tree. The creature took several wobbly steps toward me, gasping, panting, growling, mumbling. Whispers were floating in the air. I grabbed my holstered pistol and fired at this thing one last time, right into its face. Again it screamed, grabbing its face and wildly swiping at the air and trees around it. I rolled over again, trying to fire again, but I don't think I hit it. Running down the mountain, trying to escape, my lungs were aching, and my legs felt like they would collapse at any second. When I burst through the trees and found my truck sitting right where I left her, I found my hidden key, took off back to town, and as I fled down the dirt road, I could see the massive creature in the mirror, standing in the road, watching me as I drove away. I don't know what's out there in Alaska. I still live here. Just don't go to those places anymore. Be safe out there. Who knows what's roaming. So this story takes place about 15 years ago in Alaska. Back before I knew anything about the internet or anything about cryptids or anything unusual out there. In this story, it was my father's younger brother, nephew, myself, and I was the only girl. We were driving along the Seaward Highway going through the pass on our way to Seaward to go fishing. We got a late start on the fishing trip and planned to get there at night and spend the next day fishing all day before returning home. On our way, it's routine to grab drinks and snacks at the Girdwood gas station. There are many rest stops throughout the drive, but when nature calls on a two-hour drive, you've got to go, so I asked to stop. 
We all got out to do our thing. Me being the only girl walking off into the dark woods halfway through my business, I start to hear twigs and stuff cracking, and something moving. Living in Alaska, I'm very familiar with the wildlife, and one thing you learn is they're more afraid of you than you are of them. So, they tend to leave you alone if you do the same to them. This sound came a little ways away from me, and at first, I instantly look deeper into the forest and see nothing. As I'm finishing my business, I heard a low growl and look over to see two glowing red eyes staring at me. So instantly, I rush up to get my pants up, not looking away from whatever this thing is, to see it coming towards me very slowly. So I instantly come running out of the woods screaming that we need to go. By the time I get to the car, my family is already almost in, and my dad's starting to put the car into gear to drive away. I was maybe only 15 to 20 feet into the woods, enough to have privacy so it didn't take me long to get to the car, and I thought my family just went to the car because they heard the urgency in my voice. When I got to the car and we were driving away, I thought they would ask me what happened, but they told me as I was running to the car they had seen whatever it was and heard it growling. They said it was coming up behind me as I ran to jump into the front seat. I didn't look behind me, but my family saw whatever it was chasing me and that it wasn't normal wildlife that they were familiar with. All they said it was some type of monster, and they knew it was time to get out of there as fast as we could. It shook us all up at the beginning of our trip, and that's all we talked about for the rest of the drive to Seaward. I didn't really get a good look at whatever it was. All I remember is seeing the deep, glowing red eyes. But my brother told me, when he saw it come up behind me, it almost looked human but taller, but it never came out of the trees. I'm still not sure to this day what it was, but every time I drive down there to do that trip, I don't stop anywhere except the designated stops, and never at night. It scared me too much. I'm scarred, and I don't even drive alone, even in cities. There's so much going on in the world. Why, there's the stuff you're excited about, new animes, new movies, new scary stories from the channel, or stuff you'd rather not think about, uh, you know, politics and all the other boring, terrible stuff in life that seems to tear everybody up. You can't always control the vibes out there, but you can always control the vibes in your head with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds in your ears. Raycon is sponsoring today's episode, and I've been using these headphones for quite a while while I do my gym routine, and I love them. Whether you use them to pump up, wind down, work, or work out, Raycons are my go-to for on-the-go audio, and the new everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They're super comfortable, I love using them, and I honestly hate earbuds usually. With an improved rubber oil look and feel, and optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these are impressive before you even start listening. You get three new sound profiles to make sure everything you're listening to sounds its best, with just the right amount of bass. You have pure mode, perfect for listening to your favorite scary stories and instrumental music. You have balanced mode, great for podcasts, rock, heavy metal and stuff, and then bass mode for hip-hop, EDM, reggae, etc. There's also an all-new awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings instead. Raycons offer 8 hours of playtime and 32-hour battery life. There's also a built-in mic, and you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button. Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. You can't beat that. Right now, Swamp Dweller listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash swamped. That's buyraycon.com slash swamped to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash swamped. I grew up in what's called a dry cabin off the grid in Alaska. This means we had no electricity, except a generator, no running water, and we heated our home with a wood stove. My family built my childhood home on 20 acres that butted up against state land. We also didn't have a driveway to our home and walked a quarter mile to and from what we would call a parking pad. Our nearest neighbors were roughly a mile and a half from us. It was a very private place to live. I was about 17 or 18 when this event happened. My parents were house-sitting for friends and I was home alone. If I recall correctly, it was around 10pm in the middle of winter. I remember it snowing quite heavily that night, 
and I was sitting next to the wood stove reading a book under lantern light since our generator had run out of fuel a few hours before. And I didn't really want to go out and fuel it up because it was so cold. Out of nowhere, and seemingly for no reason, my three dogs started frantically and very aggressively barking at the front door. It was the kind of bark that made me think there was a bear outside, so obviously I didn't want to let them outside. But like I said, it was the middle of winter, so I knew it was very unlikely to be a bear, as they should have been hibernating. It was more likely to be a moose, but I thought that couldn't be either, because our dogs were used to moose at this point. They were in our yard very often, and they hardly ever barked and never really chased them. I tried to calm the dogs, but they were acting like a bunch of crazed hellhounds. They suddenly quieted down for a minute, and that's when something knocked very hard and very loud on the front door three times, very distinctly. I grabbed the fire poker, turned my lantern off, and hid behind the wood stove, thinking it was some crazy person who walked a quarter of a mile just to rob us. The dogs went ballistic. I waited until the dogs finally calmed down to come out from my hiding spot and very cautiously went to the front door with a flashlight and looked out the side windows to find that there were no visible footprints in the snow on the front porch. This confused me, so I very carefully, very slowly opened the front door to get a closer look and there was absolutely nothing but fresh snow on the front porch and steps. I was very freaked out by this and decided to let my dogs out to investigate. They sniffed all over the front yard and porch like something had left a strong scent, but I couldn't see any physical evidence that there was anyone or anything there. It's been about 16 years since this has happened, and I'd still like to know what this could have been, so if anyone in the comments section could give me your theories, I'd love to hear them. I have a theory of my own as to what it could have been, and I don't think it's a ghost. And Swamp Dweller, if you read and share my story, thank you. I love listening to your videos and look forward to them every single week. Hello, my name is Nona for the sake of my identity. Yes, I am a guy, my great grandma lives in Alaska, and I don't really visit her that often due to expenses and the distance. Let's call her Ray for the sake of it. Don't get me wrong, I love Ray dearly, but it gets costly to keep going from North Carolina to Alaska. But the story is back in 2015. My boyfriend had died from suicide and I wanted to get away from the situation and decided to go to the res for the rest of the summer. Her property is very beautiful. It's on a Native American reservation and which always intrigued me. I am of course part of this native descent, but I've never been told much about it. Ray knows much about the culture. She never spoke to me about skimwalkers due to whatever reasons. She did tell me about the Wendigo though, a spirit that makes you into a cannibal. I went into the forest to the hidden lake that she showed me as a kid. That place always gives me this calming sense that I'm safe, but something was off this time. The water was still and the trees rattled. I thought I heard Ray's voice in the trees. But when I looked, she wasn't in the path or anywhere around the lake. It looked as if the path hadn't been used in years with bushes and tree limbs everywhere. This made me uneasy. Then I heard Ray again. I was excited about her bearberry pie because it was just so good. And I swear, I heard her whisper something about it being at her house. When I stood up, my legs got stiff. It were as if my instincts wanted to prevent me from walking let alone standing there. I glanced to the tree line and there were a pair of eyes locked onto me. One thing I know about Wendigos is that their eyes are either yellow or yellowish orange. At least, that's what Ray told me. There was something that told me that this was a Wendigo even though the eyes were icy blue. They were cold and dark. It was as if they were meant to petrify you. I could start to see its silhouette as I stared back at it. It was long and bony. I wanted to run, but I was too scared. Its horns were very similar of that of a buck. I wouldn't leave the tree. I felt safe, or so I thought. It growled and tried to say something, but the words were so distorted I could hardly make it out. All the alarms were blaring in my head. Red flags were going up everywhere, 
and I ran into the lake and proceeded to swim across. When I reached the other side, I ran as fast as I could. The only warmth I got was from my body heat. I could hear branches and bushes break about 25 yards behind me. Before I knew it, I saw a torch coming up and used whatever energy I had left to sprint to it. The only problem is that there were brambles between me and whoever was holding the torch. I remember a small opening at the bottom that I made when I was a kid. I prayed to God that I could slide under the brambles. I slid just barely under the brambles, but had to claw my way through because this thing was trying to grab my foot. Something had grabbed my hand and pulled me through. When I finally came to realize who it was, it was Ray and three other men. One of them is Jack. She said, I saw from the kitchen window something started following you. So Jack and these other boys came. Jack lit the brambles on fire and I got to see this thing in full size. It was like eight feet tall with claws about the size of a Kodiak bear. Kodiak bears have nearly six inch claws. It was gray with dark brown fur. It stared at us for a second and darted back to the forest. Ray put me on the next flight to North Carolina and decided to move here with me. Since then, we haven't been back to Alaska, and I've never been back into those woods without a lighter and someone with me. My name is Gerald. I'm 37 years old and I live in a cabin in the deep Alaskan countryside. I've lived in rural Alaska most of my life, and the quiet woodland has never bothered me. Until now. I've been on my own ever since my late father passed away six years ago. This area is always quiet with only family and friends that visit me from time to time. The closest town is about 30 minutes away. I don't have many neighbors either, and even though this sounds crazy, I've never felt much danger here. I guess I've never given much thought to what else could be out there in the dark other than, you know, wildlife. So let me start off my experience by telling you, no matter how tough you think you are in these deep country-sided areas, nothing can prepare you for this. So, it was just like any other evening. It's February and extremely cold. I hopped back in my truck from loading cedar chips that I used for my dog outside to stay warm. I start my engine and start my trek back home. As I get about 10 minutes away, I get this feeling in my gut that something is off. I've had this feeling before, just like anyone else, but this was different. I started to get nauseous and felt the color drain from my face, so I pulled over and swung my door open just in case I had to puke. As I held my head out the door of my truck, all I could think was, what the hell was that? Something still felt off, but my nausea had subsided. So I pulled back onto the road and continued until I got home. As I pulled into my long gravel driveway, I could see that my front porch light was not on as I had left it. I pulled into where I parked and opened the door slowly, keeping my head on a swivel as I take my 45 out of its holster. I slowly approach the steps and take out my phone light. My front porch lights looked to have been shattered. My first thought it was someone who broke into my cabin and wanted to relieve themselves from being seen if I came home. But then I shine my light down the steps and see footprints in the snow. Let me just point out, for one I don't usually use my front porch. I usually go to the side door, so I know it wasn't me. And second, these weren't human footprints. They were, they were way, way bigger. Even bigger than a working man's boot. And they also left scratch marks all the way up the porch with every step until they got to my door where the light was. The thing I was most confused about though was the fact that the footsteps went up to my front door but never came back down. Nervous at this point, I unlocked my door quickly, flip on the lights and immediately was met with a strong smell of decay. Holding back my vomit, I yell out, if anyone's in here, come out now I'm armed. Complete silence follows, so I say again, I'm not messing around, come out now and you won't be shot. Still, there's silence. So I slowly make my way to each room, and there's no one and nothing to be found, and nothing seems to be touched. Confused and honestly terrified, I go out the side door to my cabin and realize that this whole time, I've not once heard my dog barking outside from his kennel. I bolted around back to see my beautiful German Shepherd was gone, just a large circle of blood stained 
in the snow and some fur were left behind. I noticed there were the same footprints. I don't even know what it was or what you could even call them at this point. They were leading away from the kennel and all the way up to the tree line. So, my 45 in hand, I sprint up the trail, taking my phone light out once more and reaching the wood line. I stop to the sound of rustling, but I can't tell where it's coming from. As I'm looking for whatever is making this noise, I see a red glimmer catching my light. To the right of me, it's another small pool of blood. As I shine my light directly up, I see my dog's head shoved onto a small tree branch. I let out a scream and then hear one of the heaviest thuds come crashing towards me that I've ever heard in my life. I mean, this thing must have been making ungodly leaps to move this fast. I look in the direction they're coming from, and all I see is this huge thing barreling towards me on all fours as it lets out one of the loudest screeches I have ever heard. If I had to describe it, the only way I could put it, honestly, is that it sounded like a woman screaming at the top of her lungs in both high pitch and low demon-like screams. Without thinking, I sprint straight down the trail as fast as I could toward the truck, but I can hear this thing gaining on me, so still running, I glance back and fire two shots from my 45. I hear the rustling stop, but I don't stop running. I know for a fact I didn't hit it, but I think the sound, the noise alone, probably creeped it out maybe. When I get to my truck that was about 25 yards away from where I fired my shots, I look back as I'm swinging my door open to see what looked to be an 8 foot tall creature now standing upright with glowing red eyes. It looked to only have a few patches of fur, and it looked like it was malnourished or something. It let out another screech, so without hesitation, I hopped in my truck and floored out of there. This happened two nights ago, and I'm staying with my sister about an hour and a half away from where I live. I don't know what that thing was, but it's unlike anything I've ever seen. I tried to chalk it up to being a large animal with mange, but nothing does that kind of stuff. That thing, whatever it did to my dog, that's not natural. It was dark that night, so I couldn't really make out a whole lot other than its terrifying, glowing red eyes, the patchy fur, and how tall it was. Above all else, though, what possibly moves that fast, and what the hell makes that kind of sound? I really don't know where to go from here. I think I'll stay with my sister a little longer. Hopefully. I won't ever see that thing again. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true horror stories from Alaska sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes and that's incredibly helpful to the swamp. If you're new to the channel, why not join us? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode as I upload them nearly every single day and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it be from a specific state or something different, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you're listening to this on iTunes or another podcast platform, please be sure to give this a 5-star rating as it helps me out a ton over there. If you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. It's absolutely free and always will be. If you would like to support The Swamp outside of hitting that like button, subscribing, and giving us a 5-star rating on Apple Podcast, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, and much more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. I'd love to know in the comments down below what story tonight was your favorite. I think that last one might be mine. It was pretty gruesome what happened to the dog, but these Wendigo tales from Alaska are always interesting. Be sure to join me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I'll see you all soon with another creepy video.